it. It's dark as a obsidian. And it light and beautiful and bright as the sun. The salt of the earth. Fire burning and water dripping. How could be using goddess of magic? She is timeless. The pillow that doesn't need a plug. She is the wildest woman. And let me say it again for those who need to hear it. The black woman is God. Let me say it again. The black woman is God. Debian Nikki, the original wireless woman. Welcome back to part two of the Who is the Wireless Woman episode. But before we get into that, make sure that you like this video. If you have any questions or comments, leave that below. Please subscribe to this channel. And if you really feel this video, go ahead and share that link. Click that notification bell to be notified of uploads. And let's go ahead and get on into it. Class is now back in session. This journey for me was kind of like what going to Ghana must have been for Dave Chappelle. Everyone needs to go on their own odyssey. Everyone needs at some point in their life to take everything they think they know and believe in and just test it. Just put it down and open yourself up to what everyone else is experiencing. Become like a real citizen of the world and see what's out there outside of your own perspective. During my year of isolation, I went completely off all social media. I even let go of all of my social media. The social media that I have now is brand new. I used to have thousands of followers before, people that were connected to my art and music. You know, social media is a highly addictive place where we get a lot of dopamine, a lot of support for very negative habits, a lot of validation seeking goes on on social media. So when I shut all of mine down, I was left in a world of my own. But it was kind of like the end of the never ending story where he had that one little pebble and she says to him, now you can create the world again. You know, he... <laughs> and he's looking at it, he's like, is that all of it? Is that all that, that's left? And she's like, that's all that you need. And so when I shut down all of my social media platforms, I really began to detoxify my environment. Once I got myself down to the smallest microcosm that I could control, which was myself and my own life and my own existence, my own environment, I really got back to basics. I really did the personal work. So I had no phone, no TV, no social media during that year. And when I tell you, I was so productive, so peaceful, so calm, so quiet. And it was just natural. Like it wasn't something someone else had to tell me to be. We're out of balance. We're completely out of balance. And the chaos that we see in the world is being projected from inside of each one of us. We're, we're each our own tiny little universe. We're each our own little system. Until we each take responsibility for the projections and the energy and the wavelengths and the vibrations that we put out in the world, we're not going to see order be restored. I had already been in therapy about three years, but of course I was back in therapy. 
So my therapist put me in grief recovery. When he started talking to me about recovery, I was like, wait a minute, that, that sounds like some addiction stuff. Um, and it was. I didn't realize how addicted I had become to um, these emotional and chemical reactions, this dopamine that you get from acceptance, from, from needing to be accepted by people. Like I said, um, I was really on the verge of a nervous breakdown, which may have actually been a midlife crisis. But when I went into therapy, my therapist was able to identify for me that it wasn't crisis. It was actually grief that I had been in a long-standing codependent relationship with grief. And I literally had to go into treatment for grief like a drug addict would go into rehab. I am going to I am going to tell you more about my grief recovery process in other episodes. It was really interesting to realize how much of my suffering was wrapped up in an addiction that I wasn't even aware that I had. And getting off the social media, eating natural food, going to therapy, channeling my divine feminine energy helped me to really find balance. And like I said, when I emerged from that cocoon, I just had superpowers. I was so much more in tune with my spirit man. I had done so much light work. During that year of isolation and separation from social media, I went through a separation in my marriage. My father passed away. Um, it was this weird thing because it was this weird phenomenon because I was experiencing so much abundance, growth, spirituality on one side. And then on the other side, there was so much death, destruction, division. It was like, it was literally like light versus darkness. And the one thing that I wanted was the things I had relied on in the past. Like I wanted to come on social media so bad and get that sympathy fix of, of, of letting people know what was going on in my life. But I strengthened my own personal inner man by doing that work personally and just showing up for myself every day. I went through those things on my own and I began to, and I began to develop a community of people that were there in real life, people that I could actually reach out and touch. I spent a lot of time writing letters to people, like old school, old fashioned envelope letter stamp. Like I have stamps, y'all. Stamps. And I just became so much more connected and in touch. And, and it's like Wi-Fi where you can't see it, but you can feel it. You can tap into it and connect to it. And, you know, I had actually developed a network of people. It was real. It was tangible. You know, I also lost a lot of toxic friends. As I began to do that work and really grow and develop, it put a strain on so many relationships. But then I had to realize that as I was detoxifying myself, I was becoming more and more and more resistant to other people's toxicity and that the people I was having the deepest rifts and that the people I was having the deepest rifts with, even though I love them desperately, were the people that were creating an environment that had allowed toxicity and negativity to fester and grow in my life. And I mean, I lost a lot of long-term friends and relationships. And you know, I want to take time while I'm on here to say that the friends that I had, I love y'all. I still miss y'all. The door is still open. The hand of fellowship and friendship is still extended to you. You know, I want to do the work of building healthy communities, having healthy boundaries, and us really being able to grow in love together. If that's what you want, you know, um, if not, then.
stay the hell where you at. But what I found was that it isn't always bad people with bad intentions. Sometimes it's good people with really good intentions. They can be your greatest enablers. You have to allow your self-discovery journey to approve for you what is good, acceptable, and the perfect will of God for your life. And that may not always include everybody that's walked dark paths with you. Sometimes they may not be ready to let the light in like you are. And it doesn't mean that that's a bad person. It just means that it's time for you to separate that road. That's something that Abraham and Lot had to do. That's something that happened when Lot's wife looked back and then he ended up on his own with two girls and that turned out chaotically. But my point is, sometimes people who love each other still have to separate. When good people have a negative influence on your life, it's easy to get lured away by predatory people at that point because now you can't tell the difference between good people with good intentions and bad people with bad intentions because the influence and the outcomes are the same. That's where cognitive dissonance comes in. And honestly, all black people, all black people in America have some level of cognitive dissonance. You wake up every day in an you you wake up every day in a system that's designed to fail you while everyone's telling you you need to pick yourself up by your bootstraps. So that is an automatic recipe for disaster. And every black person needs to be in some kind of therapy. <laughs> Being black in America is a permanent gaslight. And even if you don't think that you need therapy, it's just good to check it out. It's like tire pressure. Just check it periodically. The same way you get a physical with a doctor every year, you need a mental health checkup just from time to time to make sure you're good. During that time, I also met a woman and she said something to me I had never been told before. She said, you know, you really need to harness your feminine energy. And I was like, I y'all stay away from me with this femininity stuff because that's that's not my bag. Like I don't I don't do <laughs> femininity. Like, don't get me wrong. I think it's great for everybody that has it, that does that, but femininity is is not my thing. And she instantly challenged that. She was like, no, 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 no. You have great feminine energy. And so I realized that I was out of balance in my world because I was out of balance in myself, you know? And this is a side note, but women, ladies, we have to stop letting men define for us what femininity is. Femininity is a very unique thing. It's unique to each female. The same way that you would go out into a field of flowers and they don't all look the same. Even if they are all daisies, they still don't look exactly the same. And you may see some daisies and some daffodils. You may see some tulips and some sunflowers. You may see some roses and some lilies. Women are meant to be like flowers of the field. Whatever femininity is to you, Whatever femininity is to you, whatever your gut tells you about what you, what the world needs from you, what you have been placed here to express to the world is as unique to you as you are unique to the world. So please, please, please don't let people tell you what femininity is. What a lot of men are describing nowadays is enhanced femininity. It's meant to partner toxic masculinity. Alpha males who are over expressing masculinity in a way that's destructive to them and doesn't create harmony and balance will seek an enhanced feminine, an enhancedly feminine woman. Um, and, and I'm not going to go into enhanced femininity and how that's affecting like the trans population because I just, that, that'll be another video. But enhanced femininity is an out of balance femininity that's meant to counter toxic masculinity. So, so don't let anybody tell you that femininity is this 
passive, powerless thing or this one size fits all thing because it is definitely not that. The more balanced I became in my feminine energy, the more at peace and harmony I felt in the world. So people are always ask me, what's with the tribal? Why do I wear tribal? And I am attempting to normalize tribal, um, but it is because we are at war, you know, Becoming your best self is a very courageous act. You have to defeat your own shadow man to level up. It's like a video game. To get to the next level, you've got to defeat some level of shadow that already exists within you. And so tribal for me represents the internal struggle within and the external war without. It's the outward manifestation of the inward work that I've done. It allows people on the outside to know that I intend to remain unique, that my uniqueness is something that's not for sale. It's something I'm not going to sacrifice to fit in and be accepted. A lot of people's body is a temple, but they've never actually been to a temple. And some of the things that go on in the temple would really spook the heck out of most New Age Christians. Like, y'all are way more religious and stoic than, like, even biblical characters are. Like, some of y'all are really Pharisaic, and you should really adjust your belief system as to whether it's inclusive or exclusive. Because if you're really a member of this exclusive club, you're probably missing the point of what spirituality is supposed to teach you about yourself in the world. You, you might want to test some of that. But whenever you look at temple worship and then see your body as a temple, see your home as a temple, your community and how you interact in your relationships as being temple worship, all of, all of those things are an extension of worship. And, and the beautiful thing about being off of social media is how much time you have. I had so much time to invest in myself, discover things about myself, discover things about the world. And when I begin to put those things into context, you know, I begin to learn about energy and light and alchemy, you know, apothecary like prior to we're we're so smart now we have so much information and so much we have so much information and so much knowledge now we're just too smart for our own good like back in the old days you always knew where your healers were you always knew where your food sources were we had communities that were connected we had storytellers and people who knew the history and, and we don't have any of that anymore. We just have Google now. Now we have Google. And Google will never be smarter than your grandma. I just need you to know that. Google will never be smarter than your grandma. And you don't want to be a Google grandma. You want to be a grandma who has some lived experience, who has some wisdom and knowledge to pass on. As I begin to learn about how the body is affected by lights and sounds and smells and ointments and oils, I begin to realize that experiencing the world the way that God gave it to me was so much more than anything that I had been taught or learned before. And what's strange is when you say that stuff to people, particularly Christians, they get like mega spooky about it, not realizing that you go into churches that have the music set at certain megahertz and have the lights going at certain watts to put you into a euphoric suggestive state. But somehow <laughs> people go to nightclubs and the music are played at certain BPMs and the lights are set at a certain level in order to seduce you into a euphoric state. Like your church really isn't much different than a nightclub and you hadn't really even noticed that. But when somebody is playing like some crystal symbol, but like if someone's playing like some bowls or crystal symbols, all of a sudden that's voodoo. Y'all should really, y'all should really check on yourselves. 
But the programming is so deep that a lot of people are in this suggestive state all the time and you're getting messages from the world. But I promise you, when I cut the TV, the social media, the news off for a year and a month, I was off of all this stuff for a year and a month. The blue light from your phone. Oh, when I cut this stuff off for a year and a month, I became someone else. Someone totally else. Someone I did not know before, but someone that I love and I will never part with again for anything or anybody. Everything from the food to the phones to the me to the programming, all of it is meant to subject you. All of it is meant to keep you in bondage. Your every moment of every day is a part of some greater agenda. And it's really time for you to turn it off. It's really time for you to take a chance on seeing if you're being lied to or not. But I would go on trips and not even take my phone with me. I went away from GPS. Many people don't know that GPS shortens the part in your brain that is able to reason, that is able to um, map things and find your way around. It's like being a lab rat in a maze and they keep changing the maze where you never learn your way out. So the, like when we were in school back in the eighties, you remember how they used to teach you to read a map. They would give you like North, South, East, West, and they would ask you is main street two blocks East or West. Like we actually had to learn that stuff when we were in school in the eighties. Well, we don't read maps anymore or even directions for that reason. And it takes away the part of your brain that's able to use deductive reasoning and critical thinking like you don't think those two things are related but they really are so during my year I went without GPS I would actually try to find my way around places like even if I went to a new city on vacation I did a lot of traveling during my isolation year and oh and and people were like how did you get around how did you like as if we've always had GPS like GPS is a relatively new thing like we <laughs> Most of us millennials lived at least half of our lives without cell phones and GPS. So I, I'm, I'm always astonished by how, how freaked out people get at the prospect of being somewhere without a cell phone. It's like, <laughs> you didn't have a cell phone 20 years ago. But anyway, um, so I would actually get out and talk to people and ask people, you know, where things were. And I think we're naturally suspicious of people nowadays for good reason. But during that year, I met so many people that were so helpful. People that literally would say, well, it's all, you know what? Let me get in my car and I'm going to show you. Like I was restored to faith in humanity because of how many people that were willing to help me during that year. And don't get me wrong, even though I'm about my people, black people, because everything's about proximity. You have more black on black crime because black people are in proximity to black people. Because when I go in places, I connect with other people that look like me. And I feel like every bit of progress that I will achieve for myself has to be as because I believe that every bit of progress that I achieve for myself cannot come at the expense of my people. That when my people prosper, I prosper likewise along with them. When I make the state of Black America better, I as a Black American have a better life. So, you know, I'm, I'm about my people and that I'm uncompromisingly about my people. Jesus was about his people. Moses was about his people. I am about my people and my people first. Jesus was so about his people. He told the Syrophoenician woman, you get nothing off this table because this is what I do for my people. And she literally was like, listen, even dogs get crumbs. And she had to acknowledge his culture as being superior before she could get blessed by him as a member of that particular culture. So I'm about my culture. You know, I believe white power to white people. Is this going to be hate speech on YouTube? I believe about power to the people. 
brown power to brown people, black power to black people, white power to white people, yellow power to yellow people. I don't want to see anybody be subjugated. But for me, because of proximity, but for me, because of proximity, I have to start where I am with black people and black women, women in particular, these are my communities. This is where intersectionality starts for me. So that's where I'm going to start. But please do not be remiss. I love a Henry Rollins, Allison Chains, Nirvana song. I, I'm all about some Blake Shelton, some Miranda Lambert, even though I really hate that they broke up. And I'm not going to really get into my feelings about that. But, you know, you, you can give me some Billy Currington or some Josh Turner any day. Any day, Jason Aldean. But... My people are my people. I'm going to start with them. Accountability and blessings, I'm starting right here with them. But during that year, so many people of so many different cultures, races, walks of life extended hands of fellowship and solidarity to me. It has changed my faith in humanity. And it took being off the grid to see that it to see that the news and the media isn't always telling you the full story of what's going on you have to actually be out in your community experiencing it yourself so many people gave to me so many people helped me so many people extended themselves for me during that year and during that time i will never be the same I am your girl, Debbie and Nikki, the original wireless woman. Thank you for taking time to start this journey with me. As I said before, we're definitely not all going to end up at the same place, on the same path even, or at the same time. But I'm not here to tell you what to do. I'm here to tell you what I do. And hopefully, as we all begin to test limits of what we know to be reality, hopefully, as we all begin to take chances and educate ourselves and open ourselves up to a wireless, tribal, more basic way of living, we can actually find our way back from the brink of destruction. That's what my hope is that we can actually begin to establish strong bonded families and communities and hopefully develop a more perfect union. So thank you for coming to hang out with me today. I hope to see you again very soon and I will see you next time. Class is now dismissed.